it's great to see girls who want to step into the gym, uh, young girls especially, and um, they stick to the boyfriends <laughs> to work out, right? Girls who are fresh, you know, it's their first time in the gym and they don't know what to do, so they depend fully on the boyfriends. So the boyfriends, for convenience sake, they'll just say, okay, you just do what I do and then, but you just do it like them. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So what usually happens in the end is the girl will probably just be waiting around and just go like, Yep, and that's one mistake that you probably see at the gym. Hi, I'm Hui Mei and welcome to Sports With Me. This episode is gonna be slightly longer, maybe not slightly, but two times, three times, four times. <laughs> but trust me, it's gonna be jam-packed with information, important information that you don't want to skip. I speak to a personal trainer of 10 years, Filza, from Bow Fitness. I've included their social media handle in the description box below. And we talk about whether you should have a routine for your workout, weight loss tips, ways to get your butt moving while you're traveling, should you exercise when you're sick. And here's a bonus, I got her to demonstrate the proper form of how you deadlift and squat. So you're in for a treat. So stick with me, like this video, tell me in the comments section what you've learned or any tips you have for workouts and gym in general. And share this video, subscribe, and also ring the notification bell beside the subscribe button so that you can be the first to view my videos. So basically, I guide my clients, I coach them uh, to achieve what they want, uh, either weight loss or getting stronger, getting fitter. I watch out for the execution, uh, I time them, you know, I make sure that uh, they, they perform all the exercises safely and also uh, they are always doing things um, based on their own fitness levels. So I don't give a generic exercise for all the clients. So each client, each individual client has got their own individual program. So when you're doing the exercises, I make sure that they, it is performed at their level. So for example, if somehow I feel that they can do more, you know, because I can watch them, right? So I get them to do more, I push them a little bit more. So you said um, you have a specialization, mm. so what, what is that specialization? Uh, weight loss for women, um, post-pregnancy, uh, I also have quite a few uh, girls who want to compete in bodybuilding. Okay. Yeah, also that. Uh, so I feel that I know the women's body uh, really well. Uh, I know what women want really well. So if it's about uh, weight loss, what would you um, recommend or any tips? Okay, so for weight loss, I mean of course the fastest weight loss is to do a lot of interval trainings, uh, you know, quick pace, intense. Uh, so I would focus a lot more on interval training, circuit trainings, uh, lots of exercises that involve, uh, you know, as many muscle groups as possible. Yeah, that would be men or women, same thing. So would you say it's like more compound exercises? Not just compound, but um, maybe functional exercises. More of interval training means I will have, like I will not just do one exercise and then rest. I'll do like, you know, like three, four exercises in succession and then and then you complete the whole thing, then you rest. So it's like high intensity interval yes, exactly. training. How much do people use? As in, uh, is there a certain time period where maybe after two months you can see this amount of results? Well, it depends on other commitments as well. For example, if they diet or if they add on, you know, some cardio-based training on their own or how frequent they actually work out. So uh, there's a lot of factors that go in as well. But um, given average commitment uh, for weight loss, right? Uh, or more like um, average commitment for people who are really focused. So, for example, they work out with me twice a week and then uh, at least two more additional sessions of cardio-based training that they do on their own. They generally watch their diet. So someone like that, they should be able to see some kind of results six weeks onwards. When you do HIIT, right, um, is it more of um, strength training where you work with uh, equipment or yeah. barbells, dumbbells, uh -huh. or is it more of body weight exercises? I give it a mix. Yeah, so like I said, depending on their fitness level, so that will depend how much weights I give, how much machines I use, uh, how much body weight training I put in. Um, I mean, I can also have uh, body weight training 
for advanced clients as well, which will still help them to lose weight, burn fats or whatever, or work on their strength, even though it's body weight. Um, so I, I give a mix of everything. Yeah. So should people stick to a certain routine or a certain um, like those exercises and then just increasingly progress in that area? There is no right or wrong in this. Uh, it really depends on what your goal is and what you want to do and probably what your style is. For myself, um, my clients never do the same thing uh, at every session. Like, you know, we don't do like, okay, I give you this certain, ex like maybe um, this certain circuit and you do the same circuit over three months. Uh, the only difference is probably you increase the weights or reps. I don't do that. Uh, it's always a surprise, you know, but the same, the consistent thing would probably be like um, the level you're at. For example, if you're still beginner level, then I'll give you beginner exercises, meaning uh, low impact or simple straight on exercises, no complex movements, uh, no jumping probably, those kind of things. So we will stick to those beginner level exercises for a good three to four weeks until you get quite used to it and then we progress from there, the next level. But it's never the same exercises or it's never the same reps or the same number of sets. So there is no such thing as a routine? As like it's Yeah, no routine. Not for me. But I'm not saying that if you do have a routine, meaning the same exercises, uh, you know, for over a few weeks, it can still work, you know, uh, given that is your program. But of course, even if whatever program you stick to, uh, I don't think if you stick to it for too long, it will work. Every time, you know, every maybe a good uh, a good time range would be every three months. You want to change it up. Okay. So how do you fit in um, exercise or working out while you're like, traveling? Yeah. Oh, for oh for traveling. <laughs> um, okay, always look out for hotels that have got gyms, okay. right? Um, that's the best. Or fitness facilities. Nowadays, a lot of people travel and they go to like you know famous gyms right. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that is within walking distance, or you know if they have to travel to it, you know it's a worth a visit, right? Yeah. Um, other than that, you can always work out in your own hotel room, uh, like you know, doing a quick interval workout, uh, or even some ab exercises or just some squats. Uh, Fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, you know, it helps to just maintain that level, um, just so that you don't break the routine. When you are consumed with work, or you're too tired, or you know, you're really on a holiday where you know you visit this place, that place, whatever, you're with your family, sometimes there's really no time to work out. It's okay, you know, you fall off the bandwagon, it's fine, just get back into it once you come back. So it's it's part of your lifestyle. For people who are actually sick, mm. do you recommend that they exercise? Because sometimes you know when you have the cold and the cough yeah. and flu and stuff, then people will say, Oh, you know, it's fine to just work out. Sometimes yeah. it depends on which part of your body is sick. Yeah. So so what yeah. what is the advice? For me, right, I mean, um, for so long I've been a trainer, I've seen so many people, I've been sick myself. Um, to me, I feel the best is when you are sick, like rest fully, like don't even go to work, you know, <laughs> like seriously, like rest 100%, sleep in as much as possible, take your meds, rest as much as possible, um, you know, because the more rest you have, the faster you recover then you can come back to your workouts full head on but if you're not resting fully and you try to work out because usually people are guilty right so they try to work out and they're yeah. afraid that uh, they lose one or two workouts they feel that they are taking many many steps back but if you work out while you are not a hundred percent well then you may um, actually you know, without knowing it, you may actually take many, many steps back. Okay. Because you might fall sicker, right? And then you have a longer sick period. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, if you do feel that you're already recovering, you know your body well, uh, there's no more fever, and you're not like dripping or whatsoever, you don't feel nauseous, um, always start with like maybe 50% of the intensity. Don't come back 100%. Yeah, you know, always come back, test water first, you know, 
uh, like so-called sweat it out, you know, and they say it's good to sweat it out. Yeah, like so-called just, you know, have a nice perspiration and that's it. And then once you're fully recovered, then you come 100% head on. You were saying that you had clients for many years. Yeah. So how do you make sure you vary those exercises since you said like every three months yeah. you should change yeah. things up. So how, yeah. like they're so, I feel like they're a limit to the number of exercises. Not really, because I mean, yes, of course, it depends on your creativity, uh, your knowledge level. And also, you know, uh, like how as I mentioned, you always have to upgrade yourself, you know, and uh, go for refresher courses or whatever. Mm -hmm. So all that actually gives a fresh uh, experience to your clients as well. So that is one. Another thing is, you see, when you when you take this as part of your lifestyle, right? So there are always time, and then I mentioned that this, it's like a graph going up and down. So your clients will also naturally just go through that they will have busy periods where they just cannot come for training so when they come back it's a fresh start so then you have to bring them back down and then start again on that graph right uh, or clients who are away because they've been sick so sometimes you know especially when you have older clients where they're sick for a whole month it, ha it happens okay. you know or uh, clients who are sick for a whole two weeks and then them coming back you have to bring it down, like, you know, so they go through that cycle. So it's like, it's not always like you go up, 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 up and you never come down. Previously, we touched on weight loss. Yeah. What about if people want to bump up? Yeah. So this one is interesting and fun in the terms that there's never a limit unless you set a limit mm -hmm. on yourself, right? So um, depending on my clients, like uh, how much they want to bulk up or how much they really want to build, or how much they really want to be super lean, right? So then you work uh, based on that. So it can be, um, and, and there's so many exercises, there's so many body parts. You know, you have your back, but just your back, it has the legs, you know, the upper back, the middle back, the, you know, in layman terms, right? And then you have the shoulders, just the shoulders itself, it can be broken up into like three parts at yeah. least, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that can be three different workouts at least. And then it depends on um, your creativity as well, how many exercises you can come up with. So there's um, always, you know, you start with the basics and then it, you progress from there and then you add on more exercises. And then even from the same exercise, there are many ways of executing it to really uh, buff up, you know. So it, it, it just, there's, you can keep going and keep going and keep going, you know. So what exercises do you recommend for people who wish to bulk up? I always recommend starting out with the basics. Okay. Uh, so basics for weightlifting would be compound exercises. Uh, or safe exercises like stick to machines or stick to uh, simple single plane exercises. Um, for example, if it's like a back, like a lat pull down, you know, okay. yeah, like stick with that. Okay. You know, get used to it, and then you can try other types of lat pull down, right? Uh, like changing cables or changing handlebars or you know changing angles. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, are machines for the beginners or not necessarily? Uh, in fact, if I were to bring it back to a general workout, right? For my most of my clients, I I seldom go to machines, even though they are beginners. Uh, the way I see it, beginners would be learning how to use your own body and make it work out. Right. Right. So, uh, yeah, I I don't see machines as for beginners. It's safer for people who don't know how to move mm -hmm. but uh, it's not necessarily like uh, right, for right. beginners. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what about recommendations for uh, the other objective of maintaining their health and fitness? So uh, there's the weight loss component and then there's the bulking up and what about people who just are there to be healthy? Uh, go, yeah, go for fitness, right? Mm -hmm. So mixing things up like uh, doing a little bit of cardio-based exercises, um, strength training, flexibility, uh, movement, learning how to move, learning how to use your body uh, to make effective movements, uh, excuse me, uh, learning how to um, uh, be more functional, right? Uh, so that you feel, you experience less pain on a daily basis, um, uh, 
explosive exercises even, okay. right? Like uh, sprinting, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, like uh, lifting dumbbells uh, in explosive motions like thrusts and everything. Uh -huh. So these I feel are very good functional exercises even for the general public. Because, for example, if you are walking and you suddenly see your bus and you have to sprint, <laughs> things like that, right? Um, or if you're moving, you know, you're redecorating and you have to suddenly lift heavy weights, like, you know, a heavy box. So that's an explosive functional exercise. So for general exercises, this would be, you know, things to keep doing and keep uh, working on uh, for functionality. Yeah. So by functional exercise, you mean like exercises which um, can be applied yes. sort of in real life? Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. It doesn't have to emulate, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, exactly, uh, but uh, that's where you have to understand the uh, mechanics, you know, like, uh, like for example, if you're going to lift weights, right? Uh, like uh, your moving house and you suddenly have to lift a box. Mm -hmm. So that can be uh, practiced in the gym as in um, maybe deadlifts, uh, squats, or um, even um, wood chops. Who should get personal a personal trainer? Anyone who, start, who wants to do exercises right should get a personal trainer. That's what I feel. Um, I feel that uh, a trainer um, is really good for people uh, okay, who want to start off on the right footing, definitely. Uh, people who have a new goal. Maybe you have been working out, but you, want, you suddenly have a new goal, right? And you want to make sure you want to achieve that. A trainer is always good to make sure that you do achieve it, right? Or if you're learning something new, uh, new, uh, a new set of bit, uh, um, uh, fitness probably. Uh, for example, uh, like you have always been working out, but now you want to go into serious weightlifting, okay. right? And you want to be good at it, or you want to do it right, mm -hmm. then you get a trainer. Right. Um, or who else should get a trainer? For example, if okay, you've been working out, but mm -hmm. let's say you now you want to compete, so it's a whole new level. You know, then you should get a coach. So, any uh, specific mistakes related to form, like exercise, certain exercises, and the form and the way they do it? Oh, uh, okay. There's so many, but a uh, very common one would be like a deadlift. Okay. Everybody wants to do a deadlift, you know, and everybody thinks they know how to do a deadlift. But uh, a deadlift is one of those exercises where there's so many uh, things to look out for. It's a very technical exercise. Okay that even for those people who have been doing it and who have learnt it before could probably still execute it with some mis mistakes, okay. you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those exercises where you may probably think that you are not rounding your back, but you are, you know? Uh, or uh, you may uh, not be pressing it uh, off the floor but you know, you are probably dragging it up okay. instead of, you know, yeah. So it's a, it's a very technical, it's one of those where many, many people uh, do it with a lot of mistakes. Right. Um, squats, okay. you know, uh, very common, uh, where the, um, the upright position is not even there. Okay. So that affects you, where your tailbone is, where your knees are, okay. you know, uh, and then what more if they do it with heavy weights, it's very dangerous because, you know, right. anything can happen to the spine, okay. anything can happen to the knee, to the hip uh, joint, so uh, squats is another exercise where okay. many, many mistakes, yeah. Right. So what's the generic sequence of a workout? Because uh, from what we understand from physical education right. lessons, it's like warm up, and then exercise and then cool down. So what should the warm-up be? The cool the exercise that one would depend on the person. Yeah. And then the cool down. The cool down would be like probably flexibility training kind of thing, but how yes. Uh, yes and no. Like I said, there's no uh, generic okay. uh, program, okay. right? Uh, but I would say yes if you follow that, like what you learn in school, it is 
fine. Okay. It is a good program okay. where you start to warm up because you want to warm up your joints, your, you want to bring your heart rate up, mm -hmm. you know, you want to warm up your muscles, right? So, um, warming up is definitely very good. And then you do your exercises and then you cool down means you do cooling down stretches okay. to you know relieve any tightness uh, in your body from the you know from your exercises um, yeah that that is actually a good program okay. flexibility yeah. right uh -huh. um, yeah it's very very important uh, to you know uh, less pain in your life okay. Uh, executing exercises really really well it really depends on your flexibility as well I remember in PE lessons in the past we do a lot of stretching even in the warm-up periods right. but then from what I understand it should be more dynamic yes, kind of exactly. thing so yeah. what what is it really? yeah so um, I mean uh, for my clients I get them to actually just walk just to increase the heart rate you know, uh, get the, the blood moving, the body a little bit warmer. So after that, uh, a quick session of that, and then after that, then we do dynamic stretching. Um, and then warming up can also be, for example, if you want to do um, weighted squats. Okay. So a warm up, you can also add in warm up sets where you don't put in the weights, uh -huh. but you just. Um, do the exercise so that the exercises I mean the muscles that you need to engage for that particular exercise you warm those muscles specifically first how do um, people actually find the right personal trainer or like how do okay. they see who is qualified it's, okay it's a trial and error right um, so definitely ask for a trial session first so from that trial session then you will know um, how the trainer um, will be training you okay. right and then from that session also you'll know whether you can you can click you know because it's going to be a relationship right mm -hmm. with the trainer on top of that things to look out for would be um, the kind of exercises that he will ask you to do in that first session okay. right uh, and then what he or she tells you about the kind of program that you uh, that he or she suggests right. that you will be doing okay. along the way and that's all guys hope you learned a thing or two from this video Probably more than that, but do share in the comment section below and so we can also exchange tips on how to work out better. Subscribe to my channel and I had to remind you because it's 20 minutes later, so subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell beside. I'm Hei Hui Mei reporting from Singapore. And cut!